Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to cover today from space weather to earth weather, seismic risk, exoplanet, and cosmological science. We are starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and finding the last 24 hours were very calm. We still have no sunspots and we're staring down coronal holes. Southern opening departing, northern opening incoming with another patch on the way near the equator. Solar wind is leveled off as we are inside a weak coronal hole stream already. The weakness is geomagnetism below storm conditions despite it being up off the floor. The stream from the large southern opening may intensify what's here at Earth today, but we've obviously got more coming after that. We are connected mostly to the north at this time, but direct magnetic connection should be shifting in the coming days, which is what we look for to call out a potential seismic uptick. More information at quakewatch.net. Let's go to Uganda. Horrible hailstorm whacked Central Africa. The damage to crops is exceptional. Over 800 of the largest farms in the region reporting total or near total losses comes as the government is under ever-increasing scrutiny in how it takes care of its population. We've got two stories from TESS, the new exoplanet Hunter. On the public side, we've got yesterday's news release about the first four-camera composite image release, but on its quasi-public side, that's where things are getting really fun. The team claims to have already made their first discovery. At a star system known to already have a massive planet, Another one has just been spotted by TESS, orbiting six days around the star with only twice the size of Earth. And interestingly, its mass and radius function combine to tell us it's near the 100% water curve, a water world. They indicate that the spectral data can't rule out the possibility of a small rocky iron core, which they say they think exists, but the majority of this thing is water with other lighter molecules like methane in the atmosphere. Iron core, tons of water, organic compounds. Not a bad first run, Tess. Not bad at all. Up next, we're going to the massive cosmic web, a universal-sized network of walls and filaments and voids between the material. What's amazing is that it appears there is a pattern to low and high mass galaxies in their orientation relative to the walls and filaments, their tilt and spin. Turns out they are all perpendicular or parallel based on that size, and the explanation for this, gravity. Another lesson in taking the real observations and ignoring some silly conclusions. Last but not least, we're looking at new activity of a neutron star, seemingly small and faint when looking into the heavens, but a light pattern suggests there is either a massive dust ring around the object or that the stellar winds are crashing into gases around it. Either way, they've never seen light patterns like this around a neutron star. Link to this and all the top stories can be found below the video. Website members, Deeper Look Episode 72 on the year is posted, still diving deeper into the space weather climate forcing, this time with cosmic rays and clouds. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.